since I am one of the first people on board the Disney Treasure before it ever sets sail. And, and I'm taking you with me. We're gonna see a lot of the offerings on the ship, including the Haunted Mansion bar, the Jungle Cruise bar, and a whole lot more. And I can tell you, this ship's pretty stunning. It might just be my favorite so far. So come along with me for an exciting preview of the Disney Treasure. The Disney Treasure sets sail in December of 2024, and it's the Disney Cruise Line's sixth ship. It is the sister ship to The Wish, and so it has very heavily themed spaces. And this time they're mixing it up a bit. The themes are a lot of them related to Disney parks. So a very exciting ship, perhaps the most exciting ship to debut when it comes to park lovers like us. Over the course of the day today, we're gonna see inside a lot of the spaces around the ship as well as preview some of the entertainment and some of the food. We will be taking a full sailing on the Disney Treasure this December before it sets sail to the public. So we will be getting the full treasure experience as well. But I of course wanted to go along and take you with me on this fun preview. Hello, I'm back. I literally just landed back in Orlando from uh, coming home from New York City. So I'm gonna talk about what my experience was like from here because we had about 15 minutes in each location and your girl was running around. So let's start with the christening itself. So the reason that we were in New York City really was for the christening of the treasure. Now, if you don't know what a christening is for a ship, that is when the ship kind of officially gets launched. It is when they smash the champagne bottle on the side of the ship. That's, that's the christening. We've all seen it in Shrek the Third, which is all how we learned about it. All of us, right? Okay, anyway, you smash the bottle on the ship. The ship is officially in the water, is ready to go. It's an exciting time for ship people. I'm a ship person. But we were there for the christening, and the christening was so neat. I got to go to the christening for The Wish, which was really cool as well. But this christening was awesome. Basically, CEO of the Disney company, Bob Iger, and chairman of Disney Parks Experiences and Products, Josh Tomorrow, both came out onto a little stage at one of the piers in New York on the Hudson to welcome the treasure onto the seas. For more than 100 years, Disney stories have filled the world with joy and wonder capturing the hearts and imaginations of generations across every continent. And in doing so, they honored the cast members of the Walt Disney Company, who are actually being honored as the godparents of the Disney treasure, which is really cool. And then they told us all to go outside, dropped a big red curtain, sent us outside, because the treasure was sitting on the Hudson in New York City, which was very, very cool. Um, a lot of folks have asked if this means that the treasure is going to be sailing from New York City, and the answer is no, it's not. It's gonna be sailing in the Caribbean, um, but they put the ship in New York for this exciting occasion, just, you know, I thought it was cool. It was cool to see the New York skyline from a cruise ship. I've never done that before. So we went outside and Jordan Sparks sang a song about the treasure, which was surprising. Um, and then we got to watch the drone show, which you maybe have seen on social media. It was totally awesome. Um, I love a Disney drone show. They do such a good job. My favorite part absolutely was the Coco section, but I also really loved seeing the drones turn into the Disney treasure logo right above the ship. It looked like watching like a real life advertisement for the ship. It was really cool to see that with your eyes um, and just like an awesome drone show in general. Really cool to see the ship out there and then they did play the horn which Disney Cruise ships do have a very special horn that they play um, and the treasure actually has a few new ones including Remember Me from Coco which was so much fun. <laughs> But that was the christening. The next day is when we get to get into the real fun, which is when we headed on the ship tour. All right, so we are at a pier in New York City about to board none other than the Disney Treasure. Now this is a special one day preview that Disney has invited us to. So we're gonna get to go on board, take a look around the ship, check out all of those new spaces like the Haunted Mansion Parlor and a whole lot more. I couldn't be more excited. We had the christening last night and I think that this tour is gonna be pretty darn neat. So I'm pumped. We're just waiting to board right now and then we're gonna get a whole ship tour gonna eat at the new worlds of marvel restaurant i can't wait so first things first we had to board the treasure a little bit like you board a cruise when you're actually taking one even though we were only going to be on the treasure for a day so I had to go through security, get our actual little cruise passes that we had to wear all day, um, and actually board the treasure from port just like we were gonna get to sail on the treasure, which I'm not getting to do yet. We get to go and actually 
just a few weeks of the time I'm filming this, I'll be sailing on the Treasure's commencement sailing before it goes on its inaugural sailing. That is the sailing um, before it opens to the public that I'll be on. So I'm really, really pumped for that. Of course, you'll be getting a ton of content about the new ship. Um, we'll be trying out all the food and seeing what an experience actually sailing aboard the Treasure is really like. But today, I get to show you around the ship in advance, which is the coolest thing ever. Usually we are not so lucky. So we boarded the ship, we walked first into the Grand Atrium. Now this is kind of the lobby area for a Disney cruise ship. A lot of shows can happen on these spaces. First impressions, I was blown away. I thought the Grand Atrium was gorgeous. I knew I was gonna really love this one because the treasure has a more unique theme compared to the other ships. They took a lot of inspiration from African countries, Middle Eastern countries, and from Agrabah, the fictional country from Aladdin. Um, Aladdin and Jasmine are the centerpiece statue that you'll see here. You can see a beautiful lamp sitting right next to them. And the entire Grand Atrium just feels so rich and lush and beautiful. It's dark greens and golds and all those elements that you recognize from the art style of Aladdin are kind of ingrained all around the atrium. I especially love some of the mosaics um, in the pillars all around, as well as there are mosaics of like Jasmine upstairs and Aladdin. Beautiful, beautiful grand atrium. The chandelier in this room, uh, which we will see when we get to sail, does have a couple of interactive moments where it can light up and the room kind of interacts with it, but it does have Disney characters hidden in parts of the lamp. So we had to just kind of breeze through here when we first walked in, but uh, that's because we are headed to lunch at Worlds of Marvel. Worlds of Marvel is a Marvel themed restaurant on the Disney Wish and the Disney Treasure. So we have actually eaten at Worlds of Marvel on the Disney Wish before, but the Treasure has something a little bit new. So on both ships, you'll get to experience Avengers Quantum Encounter, which is a show where Ant-Man and the Wasp are doing a little bit of a presentation on Pym particle technology when things go a little bit awry. Um, and it actually feels very immersive. It feels like the ship is a part of the story, which is really, really neat. And there's an interactive element with the actual Pym particle um, canisters that are on the table. You can actually like interact with the story by pressing buttons at certain times. Now the treasure will have that show. It will also have a new show. Marvel's Celebration of Heroes Groot Remix is exclusively available aboard the Disney Treasure. In it, you can join an out of this world celebration honoring the many superheroes of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, featuring the lively duo of Rocket Raccoon and Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. The show will happen on these screens here, which you can see. And it's Groot organizing a surprise party for his friend Rocket, just in time for dessert. And it's supposed to have an awesome mix of hit songs that of course will go along with the theme of Guardians of the Galaxy. As you dine, we will drop in on your favorite heroes, both around the world and across the galaxy. More hard at work. Well, what's all this about? Now the reason for this is because the wish sails for three and four night cruises, which means you experience each rotational dining spot around one time. With the treasure, it will be sailing seven night cruises, which means these rotational dining spots will be repeats. You'll go twice, and there will be different shows at the ones that have shows. So for this one, you might see Avengers Quantum Encounter, but then you're also going to see Marvel Celebration of Heroes Groot Remix, and this show can only be seen on the treasure. We did get to experience a preview of this show and it was very cool. I liked it a whole lot better than Quantum Encounter. Um, I found it to be a little bit easier to follow while you're also trying to eat a meal. It's very sweet. I did almost tear up, which is embarrassing that I almost teared up at like a Marvel themed restaurant, but this is who I am and I should be proud of that, I guess. And in general, Worlds of Marvel is a really fun, immersive restaurant. Um, and it sort of is a great place for us to start because similar to The Wish, and unlike some of the older Disney cruise ships, the treasure has that same intense devotion to theme. So on the older Disney ships, you had some themed areas, of course, but a lot of the areas were themed to things that were not recognizably Disney, like a butterfly lounge or a London Metro themed lounge. On The Wish and the Treasure, everything is aggressively Disney. And that I think is a win for it because I think folks wanting to go on a Disney cruise are wanting to go on a Disney cruise. That's why they're paying a little bit more for it than they might pay to go on something like Royal Caribbean. We also got to eat at Worlds of Marvel, but we were not eating 
the food that will be served at Worlds of Marvel. We were given a taste of the treasure menu that had little items from all over the ship that we got to try out. Our menu today is a taste of the Disney treasure, which means we'll actually be eating things from around the ship, all sorts of different uh, meals that you can get at the different rotational dining and some of the uh, quick service as well as the adult only dining. So yes, we'll get to try out a sampling of all of the uh, different eats from around the ship to see how the treasure's food is gonna be. Now my general take with cruise food at the rotational dining restaurants, which on Disney Cruise Line are included with the price of your cruise, is that the food is generally very good, often a little bit elevated, but you can tell it's made on mass. And that is definitely gonna be true of food on the treasure. It's still delicious, it's still included in the price of your cruise, but I've noticed it can feel just a little bit one note or a little bit crowd pleasery instead of doing creative and interesting things. Because it has to. It has to be crowd pleasery because tons and tons of people are eating it at the same time each night. Now where there are gonna be standouts are with the upcharged food. You Typically these are gonna be adult only restaurants. On the Treasure, they actually have the same adult only restaurants as The Wish, Palo Steakhouse, and Enchante. Palo Steakhouse is gonna be a little bit of a nicer steakhouse offering. Um, Palo is something you will find on all of the Disney ships, offering like amazing brunch typically. And the food there is really, really spectacular. Some of the stuff I got to try during Taste of the Treasure was food from Palo Steakhouse. Enchante is gonna be even more elevated. Enchante is a very fine dining experience. You're eating a large tasting menu of very fine foods. Uh, definitely not for everybody because it's very expensive and extremely elevated. Some folks might consider it stuffy. I love Enchante. I know it's not going to be for everybody. We got to try some of those items on the Taste of the Treasure menu as well. Overall, the food was great. I had a great lunch. And if I had to call out one item that honestly everybody at my table was kind of blown away by, it was the Atwater Fuji Apple Cheesecake Tart from 1923. It had a sweet dough shell, caramelized apples, cinnamon cheesecake, and a rolled oat crumble. This, everybody at my table enjoyed. It was tart, but it was also creamy and sweet and apple-y. Had cooked apples in there. Really, really incredible. I will be ordering this at 1923 when we go on the sailing and that's the one thing that I would call out as like a specific recommendation. Next we headed on to the spot that might have been why you clicked on this video and was definitely a reason I was super interested in the treasure, the Haunted Mansion Parlor. Now the Wish launched with more themed spaces than Disney Cruises had done before. The Treasure has launched with theme spaces as well, but with a bit of a Disney Parks focused spin. So for someone like me, for someone like you maybe if you're watching this, that's really, really exciting because I'm a Disney Parks fanatic. Like these themes are unbelievable. They're so cool. And the Haunted Mansion Parlor might just be the best of them. Now Haunted Mansion Parlor sits in the same space as Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge on The Wish. So it's a very, very small lounge with no windows and no doors. All right, we're seeing the Haunted Mansion Parlor, a Haunted Mansion themed lounge here on the ship. Look at this, haunted fireplace, haunted portraits, everywhere, haunted clock. So much to see, so much to check out. This lounge is extremely cool being inside of it for the first time. It was very dark, very spooky and haunted. There were so many different things to look at. Portraits on the wall, a fireplace, um, the mirror behind the bar, which you just feel like an apparition is gonna come out of, the classic Haunted Mansion chair, and a really neat fish tank, which I <laughs> quite liked seeing. The fish tank makes for an awesome center of the room, and there is a bust of Rolly Crump uh, with his face kind of melting, who was an Imagineer who played an integral part in the creation of the Haunted Mansion attraction originally. Now this lounge does kind of have a show to it, so while you're sitting in it, the lounge will come alive, or come to death, because it's haunted, where it will start to, you know, the grim grinning ghost will start to come out to socialize. You might see Madame Leota in the mirror behind the bar. You might see the dancing ghost from the ballroom in the mirror behind the bar. The fish in the fish tank start to rise up, skeletal fish start to rise up from the bottom and then start to swim once they're up and at them. Uh, the portraits start to melt away and become spookier versions of themselves. The fireplace turns wild colors. The clock on the mantle is very haunted, starts to do haunted things. The lounge just totally comes alive around you and it's really, really spectacular. There are also a number of themed Haunted Mansion drinks, of course, that you will be seeing at this spot. We will be trying as many as we can when we are on the sailing in a few weeks. So keep an eye out on the channel for that content when we can get it up. 
But for now, we did get to taste one of the non-alcoholic drinks, and I thought it was really tasty. It had a lot of great flavor, so I think there's gonna be something for everything on this menu, and I can't wait for us to get a little bit more of that experience. One of the coolest things that I wanna shout out about this bar is that it does have a secret menu that can be accessed on the tablet menu that they have there, and the only way to get to it is by sort of going to a secret screen and then solving a puzzle, or you can get to a secret menu that gives you like a special option for a drink. Very, very neat. We were only in there for about 12 minutes, but just a spectacular space. I cannot wait to actually experience it when it's like fully available. And this sneak peek inside was just, just made me want to see more. It was so interactive. I was not expecting it to be like that immersive when you're in there. Very, very neat. Okay, I just got out of the Haunted Mansion parlor for the first time. Just to give you quick first impressions, we're flying on the ship tour. It was so, so, so neat. And honestly, a little bit like actually scary. So many Haunted Mansion secrets and little jokes and so interactive. The bar does so much just as you're looking around. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, you'll hear more about it from me in the future when I'm not frazzled running around a cruise ship. And speaking of attraction themed spaces, just across the hall is another lounge, the Skipper Society. This is a jungle cruise themed lounge and there were lots of hidden details on the wall um, the space in general is beautiful and inviting with greenery in the ceiling my favorite detail was that the lamps above the bar were shaped like skipper hats which i thought was really fun they're gonna be serving a waffle here, which was quite delicious. And you will be served by skippers. So you will have skippers coming by. They will of course be cracking jokes because you know, what do skippers do? I loved all of the hidden details, especially in the booths that are right by the bar in this lounge. And also they have recreations of the Tiffany parrot chandeliers that you'll see in Skipper Canteen, which fun fact are very uh, notable in my family because my dad liked them so much that he bought one and it hangs in my parents' house now. So we also have parrots in shade, parrot chandeliers like this. Then it was on a Scat Cat Lounge. Now I was actually really surprised by this spot. It has been overshadowed in my mind by Skipper Canteen and Haunted Mansion Parlor, but Scat Cat Lounge is an Aristocats themed piano bar. I love piano bars on the ships. It's typically the place that I like to hang out. There's often live music with pianists or violinists and they usually have like champagne focused cocktails. This space was beautifully designed, beautiful grand piano in the center of the room that had cat paw prints on it that are actually the dance steps that the cats would follow. In the wonderful kind of Victorian style murals behind the booths and around the portholes, you could see that the Aristocats Scat Cat Club Band and Berlioz to Lucy Marie were all hidden in the wallpaper which was really fun to look for. I loved kind of keeping an eye out for them. And one of the coolest things that we saw in this spot is that they do serve a drink called the Cat's Meow that is very expensive. It's $130. I had to try a sample of this and I thought it was really, really delicious before I knew the price. And then I heard the price and I was like, well, it makes sense it was that delicious, but I guess I'm never having it ever again. The cool news about the Cat's Meow is it does come with these really neat glasses that actually have cat spaces in the bottom of them and you get to keep them, so that's cool. We continue our lounge tour with another incredible themed lounge, but first we're gonna walk past Sarabi. Sarabi is a family entertainment area that is themed to the Lion King and it's got tons of seating. Basically anything could happen in this area. You might see storytellers, you might play family trivia, there might be family karaoke. It's just one of those spots for cruise activities, but just behind me, We'll turn around and go into Periscope Pub. This is another themed lounge. Yes, there are many. Okay, our lounge tour continues. We've seen Scat Cats Club now. And now we're heading to Periscope Pub, which is, I know, I'm so excited for all of them. I can't even pick, but this one is pretty cool. I'm looking at it right now. Um, and this one is themed to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It is the first ever um, Disney Cruise Line concept themed to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, like full dining concept. I love this lounge. I've never seen 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It's definitely on my to-do list, but this lounge was awesome. Um, this is more of the pub, obviously. It's called Periscope Pub, so expect beers. And I did try one of their beers called The Tentacle, which was made exclusively for this pub, and it was delicious. It was like an ale, but it had a lot of like light flavor um, while still feeling like really complex and delicious, but easy to drink. I really liked it. I can't wait to try the other beers. The ceiling in this room makes it look like you are actually underwater 
water, you can see fish swimming over, you might catch something else swimming over. There are lots of hidden details in this pub as well. Behind the bar, there is a depth gauge and all of the numbers on the depth gauge are the whole numbers for the different Disney cruise ships. So that's pretty neat. My one complaint with the theming of this lounge is that this one does have windows, which I like windows. I like looking out at the ocean, but it it's less immersive because you're supposed to be underwater with the ceiling, but then you can look out and see that you are clearly on water. So that, that was my only little nitpick, but I really love this space. I would love to spend some time in here and get some beers. And apparently the helmets that were on the counter, the like Nautilus style helmets will do something cool but it's just not ready yet. So we'll see what that is, hopefully, uh, on the commencement sailing. Now at this point, we got to head back into the Grand Atrium and see a show by two new characters that are getting introduced on the treasure. Their names are Coriander and Sage. One of the characters' names is Sage. That's not gonna be confusing for me at all. But they tell stories, they tell Disney stories, and it's just something that can be engaging and bring the ship to life a little bit more. <laughs> Just off of the Grand Atrium, there are two coffee shops. This is one of my favorite things about the layout of the Wish and the Treasure is that there are these indoor specialty coffee shops. They do require an upcharge, but the other ships don't have those. They only have Cove Cafe, the adults only coffee shop. And these coffee shops have the most beautiful themes. One is Hey Hey Cafe with a Moana theme, and the other is Jade Cricket Cafe with a Mulan theme. And both of them are so light and beautiful, and I will be getting coffee at one of them every day of the ship trip. Trip ship, ship, trip. Next, we got to poke our head into the Oceaneers Club. Now, the Oceaneers Club is for kids who are ages three to 10. There's also edge and vibe on the ship for your older kids and the small world nursery for your younger kids. Now, the Oceaneers Club is really where it's at. And I have good news before you look at this footage and think, man, why did I ever grow up? Uh, they do do open houses on the ship so that everyone can come play in the Oceaneers Club. I do this every time I'm on the ships for filming. And I'll tell you right now, if I do a cruise for fun, I will be taking advantage of the haunted houses to play a little bit because just because I'm an adult doesn't mean I can't, you know, have a little fun. So the spaces in the Oceaneers Club are really immersive, really neat. You have Marvel Superhero Academy where kids can design their own Marvel suits. You have Fairy Tale Hall where kids can step into Belle's Library, Rapunzel's Studio, um, a Frozen Room and do different arts and crafts. You have Star Wars Cargo Bay, where you might run into some Star Wars characters, and you can see lots of Star Wars creatures too. Hi, Chewie. How's it going? <laughs> you look good. You always look good. Your hair's always perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all know it too, all my friends in there. Yeah. Good to see you, Chewie. <laughs> There's Captain Mickey and Minnie's deck where you can meet Captain Mickey and Minnie, hang out and play around in there. And there's the Imagineering Lab where kids can learn about what Imagineering does, can make up their own ideas for attractions. And there's even a roller coaster simulator where they can build their own ride and then ride it in the simulator. Basically, the kids have it great on the treasure. They have it great and I am jealous of them. But as a note, the only difference in the Oceaneers Club versus the Oceaneers Club on the Wish are that you might see some different things on the shelves in the Imagineering Lab. Otherwise, it's the exact same. So if you've been on the Wish, you'll be familiar. Then it was up to the pool deck, the main pool deck on the top of the ship where I ran into two friends. You might know them as Chip and Dale. I love those guys. And look at them in their little nautical outfits. They're so cute. Obviously lots of pools up on the main deck here. Um, I really like the number of pools that you'll find on the Wish and Treasure. It gives a lot of options for places that you can swim. Not in the New York City November weather. I'll tell you, it was quite brisk when we made it up here. But we kind of breezed past the pools. You can see here the Aqua Mouse. Now the Aqua Mouse is an attraction at sea. So it is kind of like a ride compared to the straight up slides that are the Aqua Duck on the older ships. The Aqua Mouse does have ride scenes and there is an all new one on the treasure that is exclusive to the treasure. Now we didn't get to experience the Aqua Mouse and honestly, I'm okay with that because it was cold. Am I really cold? I mean, 61, that's cold. But I'll absolutely be giving the new ride a try when we are doing our perfect days on the ship in a few weeks. From there, we take you into a very cool sneak peek and one that this is probably our only chance to see 
we got to see inside the Tomorrow Tower Suite. Now, the treasure does have a suite inside the funnel, which is so cool. This is a massive suite. It has a kid's room, two bedrooms upstairs, and an accessible bedroom downstairs, a massive two-story living room space with a huge chandelier, and it's all Epcot themed. I'm talking geodesic sphere wallpaper, prismatic glass everywhere you look. The staircase was incredible. And it looks out on these panoramic views off over the top decks of the ship. Want some privacy? The windows actually can frost themselves in an instant. Now this is an extremely luxury experience. I'm talking tens of thousands of dollars, but at least we got a peek inside of it because this themed space is so neat and it's clearly um, a love letter to Epcot. Just a shame that this may be the only time I ever see it. But we have the video footage so I can look at it whenever I want by just watching this video. We went to a second theme suite, another one that is extremely expensive. There are two royal suites on board and we got to see the Raja suite. The Raja suite is two stories and is themed around Raja the tiger and so a lot of Aladdin and Jasmine theming. Very beautiful suite, has a private patio to itself with a hot tub. Um, just gorgeous, opulent. Um, obviously, this is in the concierge section of the ship, uh, which is all themed to the Lion King outside of those specialty suites. So just a very neat area. Towards the end of our tour, I'll skip ahead and talk about it. We did get to see a veranda room as well. The veranda rooms on the ship, you might see theming like Encanto, Pocahontas, or Aladdin, and these rooms were awesome as well. I think the murals that you'll see above the beds are so gorgeous, so Disney, and cruise rooms are small. That's the nature of being on a ship, but uh, I think they do a good job of making use of the space. Veranda rooms do have a queen bed as well as a sofa twin and a bunk bed that can drop down from the ceiling. Fun note is that the bunk bed uh, on the ceiling, it had genie in the stars and it said, phenomenal cosmic power, itty bitty living space, which is a pretty fitting quote for the bunk bed. I'll be sharing a room with Emma and Angie when we go. <laughs> so the bunk bed will be in use. Okay. The next part, this part was for me. This restaurant is for me. Plaza de Coco. There's a Coco themed restaurant on the treasure and it has a live entertainment Coco show. Two of them, one for each night that you eat at the Coco restaurant. It was so wonderful. Walking down the hall, you are walking into like the Plaza de Familia to spend time with Miguel and the Rivera family. This is my actual dream come true. I can't wait to get in there. You guys, this is so cute. Remembering Hector. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to go inside. Yeah, let's see a friend up. And look how beautiful the restaurant is. Oh, so cute. We tried to drink and a couple tiny samples from this restaurant. Obviously the menu is Mexican authentic, um, but still something that a lot of folks are going to be able to find pleasing without being having to be adventurous eaters. Um, the non-alcoholic drink we tried here had like a really fun spice to it, and everybody was going wild for these little corn coquettes we had that were like cheesy and uh, delicious, had kind of like an adobo flavor to them. Very, very tasty. But the best part about this preview was we did get to see a piece of the night two show. So the first night when you come to Plaza de Coco, it's all about family, spending time with family, and you will see the Rivera family. The second night, I don't know too much about it, but I do know that Hector and Mama Imelda do come to the stage. Miguel summons them with a strum of his magic guitar and they come to celebrate Dia de los Muertos. They sing songs from the film. We heard them sing Un Poco Loco. It is all live performance. Miguel is there as a live Miguel. They sing everything live, they play, and there's a real mariachi band backing them up. The makeup, these skeletons look fantastic. 
and the singing was amazing, the music was amazing. I had the biggest smile on my face. I was so shocked when I saw Mama Imelda come to life, walk out. Mama Imelda is one of my favorite Disney characters of all time. So is Hector. It was like watching the movie come to life in front of me. So incredibly magical. I'm going to lose it when I see this show in full. I cannot stress enough how like special of an experience this was for me to see my favorite Disney movie come to life right in front of me. Just incredible. I cannot like say enough how much I loved this restaurant. It was beautiful in there with the lighting. I cannot wait to try the full like all the food and I can't wait to see the show in full. Truly, truly, truly incredible. Um, this is in the same space as the Frozen restaurant on The Wish, which I also really love, but wow, just a big win for me on this one. And then our final stop was to see the first act of the new show coming to the Disney Treasure, The Tale of Moana. Now I can't show footage of this as there's no filming this show, but I will tell you a little bit about it. This was a very cool show. I thought the dancing was incredible and the actors were incredible. It is a lot of Native Islander actors who are carrying this show. And I heard that uh, one of the main actors actually left Broadway to do this project because they had never had the opportunity to act with their own people. And that was so special to, to them to get to work with other Native Hawaiians and other Islanders on this project. Add the song you love we got to hear how far i'll go the how far i'll go reprise um all the songs from the beginning of the movie it was really really fun grandma tella is very funny and they've done some really interesting puppetry work the lighting and projections were really neat and the vocals were incredible this show will be seen in full starting with the inaugural voyage but uh, i was really impressed with it and it's really cool to get to see a, a stage adaptation of moana and that was my experience previewing the Disney treasure. We got to be on the ship for about eight hours. So next time we get to be on the ship for several days and several nights, we will be bringing you tons of content covering the Disney treasure. Let me know what you wanna see and know about the Disney treasure, what content you'd like to come from us while we're on the treasure, and we will make it happen. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch our coverage at the Disney Wish to compare. I'll see you there. Bye.